Welcome to day 114 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. My name is Ebony and today we're going to be reading Ezra chapters 3 through 7. So let's dive into the word of God. In early autumn, when the Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled in Jerusalem with a unified purpose. Then Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, joined his fellow priests and Zerubbabel, son of Shelatel, with his family in rebuilding the altar of the God of Israel. They wanted to sacrifice burnt offerings on it, as instructed in the law of Moses, the man of God. Even though the people were afraid of the local residents, they rebuilt the altar at its old site. Then they began to sacrifice burnt offerings on the altar to the Lord each morning and evening. They celebrated the festival of shelters as prescribed in the law, sacrificing the number of burnt offerings specified for each day of the festival. They also offered the regular burnt offerings and the offerings required for the new moon celebrations and the annual festivals as prescribed by the Lord. The people also gave voluntary offerings to the Lord. Fifteen days before the festival of shelters began, the priests had begun to sacrifice burnt offerings to the Lord. This was even before they had started to lay the foundation of the Lord's temple. Then the people hired masons and carpenters and bought cedar logs from the people of Tyre and Sidon, paying them with food, wine, and olive oil. The logs were brought down from the Lebanon mountains and floated along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea to Joppa, for King Cyrus had given permission for this. The construction of the temple of God began in mid-spring, during the second year after they arrived in Jerusalem. The workforce was made up of everyone who had returned from exile, including Zerubbabel, son of Shildel, Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, and his fellow priests, and all the Levites. The Levites who were 20 years old or older were put in charge of rebuilding the Lord's temple. The workers at the temple of God were supervised by Jeshua with his sons and relatives and Cadmiel and his sons, all descendants of Hodaviah. They were helped in this task by the Levites of the family of Hinnadad. When the builders completed the foundation of the Lord's temple, the priests put on their robes and took their places to blow their trumpets. And the Levites, descendants of Asaph, clashed their cymbals to praise the Lord, just as King David had prescribed. With praise and thanks, they sang this song to the Lord. He is so good. His faithful love for Israel endures forever. Then all the people gave a great shout, praising the Lord because the foundation of the Lord's temple had been laid. But many of the older priests, Levites, and other leaders who had seen the first temple wept aloud when they saw the new temple's foundation. The others, however, were shouting for joy. The joyful shouting and weeping mingled together in a loud noise that, be that could be heard far in the distance. Amen. So that is the end of Ezra chapter 3. We see the Israelites starting to sacrifice to God again, as well as laying the foundation of the temple, which the older Israelites who had seen the former temple and knew its glory um, wept because of this. But the younger Israelites that didn't know were joyful and glad at, at the laying of its foundation. So let's go to Ezra chapter 4. The enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the exiles were rebuilding a temple to the Lord, the God of Israel. So they approached Zerubbabel and the other leaders and said, Let us build with you, for we worship your God just as you do. We have sacrificed to him ever since King Esarhaddon of Assyria brought us here. But Zerubbabel, Jeshua, and the other leaders of Israel replied, You may have no part in this work. We alone will build the temple for the Lord, the God of Israel, just as King Cyrus of Persia commanded us. Then the local residents tried to discourage and frighten the people of Judah to keep them from their work. They bribed agents to work against them and to frustrate their plans. This went on during the entire reign of King Cyrus of Persia and lasted until King Darius of Persia took the throne. Years later, when Xerxes began his reign, the enemies of Judah wrote a letter of accusation against the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Even later, during the reign of King Artaxerxes of Persia, the enemies of Judah, led by Bishlam, Mithridath, and Tabil, sent a letter to Artaxerxes in the Aramaic language, and it was translated for the king. Rehum, the governor, and Shemshai, the court secretary, wrote the letter, telling King Artaxerxes about the situation in Jerusalem. They greeted the king for all of their colleagues, the judges and local leaders, 
the people of Tarpel, the Persians, the Babylonians, and the people of Erek and Susa, that is Elam. They also sent greetings from the rest of the people whom the great and noble Ashurbanipal had deported and relocated in Samaria and throughout the neighboring lands of the province west of the Euphrates River. This is a copy of their letter. To King Artaxerxes from your loyal subjects in the province west of the Euphrates River, the king should know that the Jews who came here to Jerusalem from Babylon are rebuilding this rebellious and evil city. They have already laid the foundation and will soon finish its walls. And the king should know that if this city is rebuilt and its walls are completed, it will be much to your disadvantage. For the Jews will then refuse to pay their tribute, customs, and tolls to you. Since we are your loyal subjects and do not want to see the king dishonored in this way, we have sent the king this information. We suggest that a search be made in your ancestors' records, where you will discover what a rebellious city this has been in the past. In fact, it was destroyed because of its long and troublesome history of revolt against the kings and countries who controlled it. We declare to the king that if this city is rebuilt and its walls are completed, the province west of the Euphrates River will be lost to you. Then King Artaxerxes sent this reply to Rehum the governor, Shimshai the court secretary, and their colleagues living in Samaria and throughout the province west of the Euphrates River. Greetings. The letter you sent has been translated and read to me. I ordered a search of the records and have found that Jerusalem has indeed been a hotbed of insurrection against many kings. In fact, rebellion and revolt are normal there. Powerful kings have ruled over Jerusalem and the entire province west of the Euphrates River, receiving tribute, customs, and tolls. Therefore, issue orders to have these men stop their work. That city must not be rebuilt except at my express command. Be diligent and don't neglect this matter, for we must not permit the situation to harm the king's interests. When this letter from King Artaxerxes was read to Rehum, Shimshai, and their colleagues, they hurried to Jerusalem. Then, with a show of strength, they forced the Jews to stop building. So the work on the temple of God in Jerusalem had stopped, and it remained at a standstill until the second year of the reign of King Darius of Persia. Amen. So we see Israel's enemies coming against them and writing a letter to the king of Babylon saying, you know, this city has always been rebellious and it will cause harm to the king. And after the king does a search, he does read that the city of Jerusalem and the people of Jerusalem have been rebellious. So at this point, the work has stopped at the temple. So let's find out what happens in chapter five. At that time, the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, son of Ido, prophesied to the Jews in Judah and Jerusalem. They prophesied in the name of the God of Israel who was over them. Zerubbabel, son of Sheltiel, and Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, responded by starting again to rebuild the temple of God in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them and helped them. But Tatania, governor of the province west of the Euphrates River, and Shathar Bazanai and their colleagues soon arrived in Jerusalem and asked, who gave you permission to rebuild this temple and restore this structure? They also asked for the names of all the men working on the temple. But because their God was watching over them, the leaders of the Jews were not prevented from building until a report was sent to Darius and he returned his decision. This is a copy of the letter that Tatanai, the governor, Shathar Bosnii, and the other officials of the province west of the Euphrates River sent to King Darius. To King Darius, greetings. The king should know that we went to the construction site of the temple of the great God in the province of Judah. It is being rebuilt with specially prepared stones and timber is being laid in its walls. The work is going forward with great energy and success. We ask the leaders who gave you per permission to rebuild this temple and restore this structure. And we demanded their names so that we could tell you who the leaders were. This was their answer. We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth, and we are rebuilding the temple that was built here many years ago by a great king of Israel. But because our ancestors angered the God of heaven, he abandoned them to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, who destroyed this temple and exiled the people to Babylon. However, King Cyrus of Babylon, during the first year of his reign, issued a decree that the temple of God should be rebuilt. 
King Cyrus returned the gold and silver cups that Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem and had placed in the temple of Babylon. These cups were taken from the temple and presented to a man named Sheshbazar, whom King Cyrus appointed as governor of Judah. The king instructed him to return the cups to their place in Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple of God there on its original site. So this Sheshbazar came and laid the foundations of the temple of God in Jerusalem. The people have been working on it ever since, though it is not yet completed. Therefore, if it pleases the king, we request that a search be made in the royal archives of Babylon to discover whether King Cyrus ever issued a decree to rebuild God's temple in Jerusalem, and then let the king send us his decision in this matter. Amen. So that is the end of chapter five. We once again see the people of God starting to rebuild the temple due to the prophecies of Zechariah and Haggai. And then we also see people coming in once again to try to stop the work. But let's see if their letter succeeds in chapter 6. So King Darius issued orders that a search be made in the Babylonian archives, which were stored in the treasury, but it was at the fortress at Ekbatana in the province of Midia that a scroll was found. This is what it said. Memorandum. In the first year of King Cyrus's reign, a decree was sent out concerning the temple of God at Jerusalem. Let the temple be rebuilt on the site where the Jews used to offer their sacrifices, using their original foundations. Its height will be 90 feet and its width will be 90 feet. Every three layers of specially prepared stones will be topped by a layer of timber. All expenses will be paid by the royal treasury. Furthermore, the gold and silver cups which were taken to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar from the temple of God in Jerusalem must be returned to Jerusalem and put back where they belong. Let them be taken back to the temple of God. So King Darius sent this message. Now, therefore, Tetanai governor of the province west of the Euphrates River, and Shathar Bosnii, and your colleagues and other officials west of the Euphrates River. Stay away from there. Do not disturb the construction of the temple of God. Let it be rebuilt on its original site, and do not hinder the governor of Judah and the elders of the Jews in their work. Moreover, I hereby decree that you are to help these elders of the Jews as they rebuild this temple of God. You must pay the full construction costs without delay from my taxes collected in the provinces west of the Euphrates River so that the work will not be interrupted. Give the priests in Jerusalem whatever is needed in the way of young bulls, rams, and male lambs for the burnt offerings presented to the God of heaven. And without fail, provide them with as much wheat, salt, wine, and olive oil as they need each day. Then they will be able to offer acceptable sacrifices to the God of heaven and pray for the welfare of the king and his sons. Those who violate this decree in any way will have a beam pulled from their house. Then they will be lifted up and impaled on it, and their house will be re reduced to a pile of rubble. May the God who has chosen the city of Jerusalem as the place to honor his name destroy any king or nation that violates this command and destroys this temple. I, Darius, have issued this decree. Let it be obeyed with all diligence. Tatanai, governor of the province west of the Euphrates River, and Shathar Bosnii and their colleagues complied at once with the command of King Darius. So the Jewish elders continued their work, and they were greatly encouraged by the preaching of the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, son of Ido. The temple was finally finished, as had been commanded by the God of Israel and decreed by Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, the kings of Persia. The temple was completed on March 12th during the sixth year of King Darius's reign. The temple of God was then dedicated with great joy by the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the people who had returned from exile. During the dedication ceremony for the temple of God, 100 young bulls, 200 rams, and 400 male lambs were sacrificed, and 12 male goats were presented as a sin offering for, for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then the priests and Levites were divided into their various divisions to serve at the temple of God in Jerusalem, as prescribed in the book of Moses. On April 21st, the returned exiles celebrated Passover. The priests and Levites had purified themselves and were ceremonially clean. So they slaughtered the Passover lamb for all the returned exiles, for their fellow priests, and for themselves. 
the Passover meal was eaten by the people of Israel who had returned from exile and by the others in the land who had turned from their corrupt practices to worship the Lord, the God of Israel. Then they celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. There was great joy throughout the land because the Lord had caused the king of Assyria to be favorable to them so that he helped them to rebuild the temple of God, the God of Israel. Amen. So in chapter six, we see the completion of the temple and the Israelites being able to celebrate the Passover festival and the festival of unleavened bread. So let's find out what happens in chapter seven. Many years later, during the reign of King Artaxerxes of Persia, there was a man named Ezra. He was the son of Siriah, son of Azariah, son of Hilkiah, son of Shalom, son of Zadok, son of Ahitub, son of Amariah, son of Azariah, son of Merioth, son of Zeriah, son of Uzi, son of Buki, son of Abishua, son of Phinehas, son of Eleazar, son of Aaron, the high priest. This Ezra was a scribe who was well versed in the law of Moses, which the Lord, the God of Israel, had given to the people of Israel. He came up to Jerusalem from Babylon, and the king gave him everything he asked for, because the gracious hand of the Lord, his God, was on him. Some of the people of Israel, as well as some of the priests, Levites, singers, gatekeepers, and temple servants, traveled up to Jerusalem with him in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes' reign. Ezra arrived in Jerusalem in August of that year. He had arranged to leave Babylon on April 8th, the first day of the new year, and he arrived at Jerusalem on August 4th. For the gracious hand of his God was on him. This was because Ezra had determined to study and obey the law of the Lord and to teach those decrees and regulations to the people of Israel. King Artaxerxes had given a copy of the following letter to Ezra, the priest and scribe who studied and taught the commands and decrees of the Lord of Israel. From Artaxerxes, the king of kings, to Ezra the priest, the teacher of the law of the God of heaven, greetings. I decree that any of the people of Israel in my kingdom, including the priests and Levites, may volunteer to return to Jerusalem with you. I and my council of seven hereby instruct you to conduct an inquiry into the situation in Judah and Jerusalem, based on your God's law, which is in your hand. We also commission you to take with you silver and gold, which we are freely presenting as an offering to the God of Israel who lives in Jerusalem. Furthermore, you are to take any silver and gold that you may obtain from the province of Babylon, as well as the voluntary offerings of the people and the priests that are presented for the temple of their God in Jerusalem. These donations are to be used specifically for the purchase of bulls, rams, male lambs, and the appropriate grain offerings and liquid offerings, all of which will be offered on the altar of the temple of your God in Jerusalem. Any silver and gold that is left over may be used in whatever way you and your colleagues feel is the will of your God. But as for the cups we are entrusting to you for the service of the temple of your God, deliver them all to the God of Jerusalem. If you need anything else for your God's temple, or for any similar needs, you may take it from the royal treasury. I, Artaxerxes the king, hereby send this decree to all the treasurers in the province west of the Euphrates River. You are to give Ezra, the priest and teacher of the law of the God of heaven, whatever he requires of you. You are to give him up to 7,500 pounds of silver, 500 bushels of wheat, 550 gallons of wine, 550 gallons of of olive oil and an unlimited supply of salt. Be careful to provide whatever the God of heaven demands for his temple, for why should we risk bringing God's anger against the realm of the king and his sons? I also decree that no priest, Levite, singer, gatekeeper, temple servant, or other worker in this temple of God will be required to pay tribute, customs, or tolls of any kind. And you, Ezra, are to use the wisdom your God has given you to appoint magistrates and judges who know your God's laws to govern all the people in the province west of the Euphrates River. Teach the law to anyone who does not know it. Anyone who refuses to obey the law of your God and the law of the king will be punished immediately, either by death, banishment, confiscation of goods, or imprisonment. Praise the Lord, the God of our ancestors, who made the king want to beautify the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. And praise him for demonstrating such unfailing love to me, 
by honoring me before the king, his council, and all his mighty nobles. I felt encouraged because the gracious hand of the Lord my God was on me, and I gathered some of the leaders of Israel to return with me to Jerusalem. Amen. So at the end of chapter 7, we see Ezra being sent to Jerusalem from Babylon, where the king has encouraged him to teach the law to the people so that they can worship the Lord their God. But all right, that is the end of day 114 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. I pray that this reading blessed and encouraged you. Don't forget to check out our reflection questions in the discussion section of the video, as well as leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so that you can get the notification for day 115 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. All right, everyone, stay blessed. Bye.